Welcome back to the Church of Obelis and to this position 5 tier list for patch 732C. We're going to go through all the common POS 5 heroes and we're going to rank them from S tier to D tier based primarily on their performance in high level pubs. The reason I'm doing that this way is that uh, high level games are a lot more about balance. If you're down in like 1k, 2k games, anything can work and really all that matters is how comfortable you are on your particular hero but once you get to like 4k 5k 6k then balance really starts to matter quite a bit but uh, at the same time i'm also gonna be taking into account lower level performance to some extent and i'm gonna point out when there's a discrepancy between high level and low level performance now without further ado let's get into the list in the STI heroes that are absolutely broken right now, that are just amazing in the POS5 role. And there's going to be two heroes here, Omni Knight and Silencer. Omni Knight was buffed a ton in 732. And in particular, his uh, Hammer of Purity is now really, really strong. And they also buffed Heavenly Grace, which now also purchase yourself with a stronger spell. So obviously it's not going to help you if you are stunned or silenced yourself because you're not going to be able to cast the Heavenly Grace. But if you're like rooted, if you're slowed, if you have a dot on you, you can purge that from yourself while at the same time purging your ally from a stun or other negative effect. So Omni Knight now just offers a very complete package. You have this offensive ability with Hammer Purity. You still have this great heal that's also damage. And then you have this strong dispel, which is always amazing to have on the support. And to top it off, you have an amazing team fight ultimate. So this hero is good at laning. He's good at pretty much every stage of the game. And he does it without needing that much farm. So he's just a great plus five. Similar thing can be said for Silencer. Uh, he's a very good laner. You do a lot of damage in lane. Like all three of your spells are very strong in lane. They offer great harassment. You don't have that much kill potential with Silencer, but he's great at dealing damage over time and winning the lane that way. And then later on in the game, you've got Global Silence, which is an amazing teamfight ultimate. With Silencer, basically all you need to do to contribute to a teamfight is just press R. Just press Global Silence at the right time. You know, you need to press it when the fight is already kind of committed, when your opponent can't just easily retreat. But if you get a good Global Silence, you've already done your job and it doesn't matter too much if you die afterwards which is great because Silencer is super squishy, so he doesn't have any sort of defensive abilities, and uh, that's why you typically want to build defensive items, you know, like a full staff, like Glimmer Cape, to keep alive. Also a great item on Silencer is going to be Eon Disc, that just helps you not get bursted so that you can always get off that Global Silence, so that's definitely a strong item we're going to go for in the mid to late game. Silence also has an aspect of uh, stealing int and just doing right click damage, but really do not overestimate that. As a post 5, you're not going to be doing much right click damage. And even if you get a couple of kills and whatnot, get some int steal, it doesn't really matter all that much. Like it's a nice bonus to have, but don't get too excited about that. It's mostly really just about the ultimate and the strength in lane. Next up, we've got the 8 here. These are heroes that are above par, that are better than average, but not necessarily broken. First up, we've got Ayo, who's a great healing support, a great builder for items like Mech and Holy Locket. And war. it's best to play this hero if you're queuing up with a friend or just with a whole party, so that you know that your friend is going to pick a nice carry that's going to benefit a lot from Ayo. You don't want to play Ayo together with like an illusion hero or a hero that's going to be jumping all over the place. Uh, because I was not going to be able to keep up, but uh, what you want is a hero that's, uh, you know, ideally fairly fast by himself and who can sort of be like a frontline hero, ideally like a ranged hero, something like uh, Luna, for example. Uh, you can sort of stay behind her. She's fairly fast, so you can follow her, but you don't want something like an anti mage that's going to be jumping all over the place. You can't really keep up with your tether if you have a hero like that. Because Ayo depends a lot on having teammates that play around you, uh, it's probably not that great in solo queue and also tends to be a bit uh, worse at lower tiers. But in like the immortal bracket, this hero is absolutely amazing. And if you queue with a friend, you can play him in any bracket and be very successful. Next up, we've got Undying, who has amazing laning prowess thanks to Decay. Uh, 
with decay you now actually get to keep the hp that you steal so it's basically also like a heal to you Zorib is an amazing healing ability and then we've got tombstone which is an amazing team fight ability as is flesh golem this hero offers a very complete package and nowadays with decay actually dealing decent damage to creeps you can even farm reasonably well so you can push out waves you just like double decay a, a wave and then uh, everything's dead so uh, this hero can even push out waves so there's like no reason not to play him he is uh, pretty amazing the only real downside is he doesn't have a stun next we've got disruptor who is a very strong aggressive hero because obviously with the glimpse you can always get plus one kill if you're winning a fight and you have a very strong team fight presence with kinetic field plus static storm and you also have Thunderstrike, which is the Agulating ability. It's one of the strongest abilities in lane. Does an incredible amount of damage for its cost. The problem with this hero is that he's not very good uh, when playing from behind. People are running at you, then this Raptor doesn't do nearly as much. He's great in aggressive lineups, not that good in more defensive lineups. Um, but overall, he is quite, quite strong right now. He's been buffed quite a bit. Next, we have Crystal Maiden who is just a very solid support. She's got like a decent laning stage. Uh, what is important with Crystal Maiden and laning stage is that you buy a couple of mangoes because you don't want to be putting too many points in the Arcane Aura. You typically want to have like a level in Crystal Nova and Frostbite. And then on a level 3 only you get one point in Arcane Aura and that's it for a long time. You probably max out Frostbite next and then Crystal Nova. And you just have to not put too many points in this because otherwise you're just going to be super, super weak. And this is like a great 1.1 that you get 0.6 mana region, which is uh, um, times 4 for your hero. So it's already 2.4 mana region, which is just a single level. So you don't really need more than that. And the primary strength of Crystal Maiden in the mid to late game is going to be her ultimate, which is an amazing ability. You can win team fights all by itself. Um, because this ultimate is so strong, you really want to get Blink Dagger, BKB and Shard. Once you get those three items, you are really in an amazing position. Um, before then, she's not that strong, but uh, she's still like very decent. And because she's a relative farm-heavy hero, uh, there's a good thing that she can actually farm quite well. Crystal Nova can push out waves quite well. Frostbite can uh, take out jungle creeps really efficiently. Uh, so this hero can shove waves and uh, actually scale into the late game typically you want to get like one item before you go for that that trifecta of blink dagger bkb and shard so you want to get like a glimmer cape or a four star first and then you go for those uh, three critical team fight items next we've got chen who is an amazing pushing hero he's got a decent lane presence it depends a lot on how how many creeps and how good creeps you get with holy persuasion uh, Divine Favor was nerfed quite a bit recently. They also nerfed Penitence, but uh, Holy Persuasion is still very, very strong. And this hero is very hard to play, so if you're not a good Chen player, you're not going to have uh, success on this hero. But if you are a good Chen player, you, you're part of that 3% here, uh, then you're going to have a great time on this hero. You still got very high win rates despite the nerfs. And if I was judging this just based on performance at the highest level, the Chen might even be S tier or at least very close to S tier. Um, but at the lower levels, he tends to fall off quite a bit. So that's why he can't really justify putting him any higher than this. Next, we've got Earthshaker, who is a great teamfight hero. Not the strongest laner, but like once you get a Blink Dagger, this hero is amazing. And because it's just more farm on the map right now, compared to uh, previous eras of Dota, it's actually perfectly viable to play a hero like Earthshaker in the post 5 role because you are going to get a dagger. It's not going to be quite as fast as a post 4 Earthshaker, but you are going to get there. And then you just have this amazing teamfight presence with amazing initiation with Echo Slam and Blink Dagger. So this hero can actually work quite well, even as a 5. Dawnbreaker, very solid hero. Uh, it's just a very complete package. You do a good amount of damage. You've got some heal. You've got a global presence with this hero and she's very flexible you can pick her in pretty much any position bane is a very strong single target disabler he's especially strong in high level games not that great at lower levels because he can't really push out waves he can't really farm but the great thing is he doesn't need to farm but right? he's already 
comes with everything he needs, uh, just in his natural abilities. You just need to get some levels. Dazzle is another nice healing support. He's got these heals, so saves. Um, he's got like minus armor going for him with the bad juju. And he's just a very solid hero. He's obviously got one of the strongest shards in the game. And Dazzle also is quite good at pushing out waves, so he can actually farm decently well with like Poison Touch plus Shadow Wave. You can very quickly kill an entire wave. Uh, we've got Shadow Shaman, who uh, has great disable, great single target disable, but also has this pushing power with Mass Serpent Wards, allows you to take objectives. Also, don't be afraid to use Mass Serpent Wards just for taking Roche. This hero does really well with cast range uh, abilities, so if you get an Aether Lens, that's uh, very, very powerful. Of course, it has a pretty good build up because you get Mana Boots first, you disassemble, get Aether Lens, and then after that, you can go into Tranquil Boots. So this hero does quite well and uh, can, can do even as a plus 5. You can also blame him as a plus 4, obviously. Next, we've got Gyrocopter, who is actually a pretty strong support hero, um, even though he's not that good at, as a carry right now. But the reason he's got a good support hero is just he's got a huge laning presence with homing missile plus rocket barrage. You do so much damage to, uh, to an enemy and uh, you, just, you, can, you can just construct these uh, very powerful kill lanes with Gyrocopter plus another aggressive carry ideally if you've got something like a ck as your carry for example you can kill people so so easily and you also have decent uh team fight present later on thanks to call down uh flag can of course not the most uh impactful ability as a plus five but can still help you a bit with like farming adding a little bit of extra damage in team fights but it's mostly really for the laning uh, strength that the uh, gyrocopter is picked Next up, we've got Abaddon, who is uh, another defensive support, has a strong dispel in a Fatic Shield, uh, can also dispel himself with Burrow Time, so if you're stunned, for example, you can just cast Burrow Time, even though you're stunned, and um, you're gonna dispel the stun from you, and then you can use the Fatic Shield to dispel your carrier mid laner to help them survive. It's quite similar to Omni Knight in a lot of ways. Um, but the big upside that he has over Omnian is that he has got uh, this uh, burrow time that just allows him to not get bursted. So uh, Abba is like a low risk, low reward kind of version of Omnianite that is more consistent. You're always going to get off your saves, but you don't have as much teamfight presence as an Omnianite. Bounty Hunter is a bit of a funky hero who's not really played as plus 5 that much, but he actually has a... Has a good win rates there and uh, does quite a lot there because the thing is that uh, you're always going to get a good amount of gold just uh, through track kills and that will allow you to buy a lot of utility items other than help you survive and then help your team thrive so um, even with low farm priority you can still do quite a bit you get the vision advantage thanks to track and uh, thanks to shadow walks you can can plant some d boards that are hard to d ward and um, just uh, be kind of a nuisance to the enemy team. That's the S and the A tier. These are the kind of heroes that I would recommend you learn if you're going to pick up the POS 5 role, because pretty much everyone just needs to know how to play POS 5, because uh, even if you're specialized in another role, you need to get those role queue tokens, and the summon's going to be forced to play support. So I would just recommend pick one of those heroes from S or A tier and uh, learn him. And uh, that way you'll be prepared and uh, do a decent job in your POS5 endeavors. But even if you're support main, you still should not really learn more than like two or three heroes as your primary hero pool because you have to first pick anyway. So you really need only need a handful of heroes just in case your main hero gets banned. You want to have like an extra one of the heroes to fall back on. But you don't need a large hero pool because you're first picking anyway. Next up is the B tier. These are heroes in the middle of the pack. There's nothing wrong with them. If you want to keep playing them, you can play them. If you like invest a lot of time into becoming an awesome Marcy player, for example, yeah, keep playing her. But if you're looking for a new hero to pick up, I would recommend choosing from the S or the A tier. So first of all, we've got Shadow Shaman in the B tier, who used to be a rather mediocre hero for a long time, but with some recent buffs, he's actually pretty good right now. Vengeful Spirit, uh, strong minus armor support, he's got a stun that's uh, very reliable, you've got a nether swap that allows you to initiate or to save uh, allies and also allows you to interrupt uh, BKBTP which is very valuable. 
a lot of stuff going on for this hero and what keeps her back a bit is that her laning stage is not the strongest ancient apparition is a bit of a situational pick he's obviously great at countering certain heroes like uh, alchemist or Huska. but if you're not going up against these heroes um, he's still like a decent hero you can still um, get a decent amount of done with ice blast even if there's not like a dedicated healing or region hero in the enemy team clockwork is more commonly played as a plus four but it can also work as a plus five he doesn't actually need very many items he can do just fine with just like a boots and a wind lace and like a wand or something like that and you can already be very annoying you can get uh, solo pickoffs on enemy supports and uh, be quite disruptive in team fights primal beast is a pretty strong laner and you can construct some some great kill lanes with primal beast especially if your carry has some sort of stun or slow rubik is a very versatile hero obviously you can steal every spell in the game so uh, playing rubik is quite challenging you need a lot of knowledge about all sorts of different spells how to use them um, but if you're a really good rubik player you can do amazing things with him even in a post five role Vanamancer uh, is a bit of a polarizing hero. It tends to be a hero that either wins lane really hard or loses really hard. So if you're behind, you just get killed, you do nothing. But if you're ahead, you're just super oppressive with all that poison damage that adds up over time. Like poison sting does so much damage over time. And you can also farm quite well with this hero. You can push out waves quite well with plague wards. The plague wards also give you a ton of vision. Um, but of course, big downsides is you don't have any sort of stun, you have no control except for like some weak slows. Next up, we've got Nyx Assassin, who's got a couple of stuns and uh, is more commonly played as a plus four, but can also work as a plus five. Uh, you've got Impale, which is actually surprisingly hard to land. So if you want to play Nyx, you want to practice it a bit. And you've got some good vision advantage thanks to Vendetta. You can get some initiation, you can get some kill potential with this hero when you hit level six. And then once you have the Aghanims, you have an amazing teamfight impact with Burrow. You're just very hard to kill. Even with plus five farm, you're eventually going to get that Aghanims and you're going to be a menace in teamfights. But it just doesn't have like the reliable impact that uh, most of these heroes in the A and S tier have. Skyrath Mage is a hero that does a ton of damage. A lot of single target damage. It's got a silence. And yeah, if you want that, if you want a lot of damage when you plus five, you can get Skyrath. But a lot of the time, you rather want other things in your plus 5. So he doesn't really fit the plus 5 role all that well. But he can still do alright. Marcy has a great initiation. She's very mobile. She can put people out of position. So she's great with an aggressive carry paired up with that. So if you have like a, a CK or like a Wraith King or something like that. Uh, you can get some nice kills in lane. But if you have a more defensive carry, like let's say a Spectre um Marcy is not gonna have such a good time lich a very balanced uh, just reasonable support that you know you've got a bunch of slows you've got like the sinister gates which is like a pseudo stun and you just do a ton of damage with chain frost so there's nothing wrong with this hero it's just like uh like uh mediocre this is why he's sort of in the middle of uh, the b tier Zeus can do decently well as a boss 5, similar to Skyrath, he just offers a ton of magic damage. But uh, he has like a bit of a more uh, vision advantage compared to Skyrath, but you've got even less control. Skyrath at least has a silence, Zeus has no uh, disable at all, except for like a mini stun. Um, so that's a bit of a problem, and it's just uh, if you're getting run at with Zeus, it uh, can be quite uh, challenging. You do have Heavenly Jump, which is a bit of an escape, but it's not uh, super reliable. Phoenix is an interesting hero. He's not that easy to play, he's not that straightforward, but uh, if it's a good Phoenix game, you can do a lot of things. Problem though is that you generally have to first pick your support, and then you can just pick uh, carry heroes like uh, Juggernaut or Ursa that deal really well with the Phoenix Egg. Zero also needs a lot of XP. So it's uh, quite valuable if you get some tomes on Phoenix and if you're able to sit in lane for a little bit. You can also push out lanes um, fairly well so you have some farming potential. Um, but if you don't get any sort of uh, farm and you don't get much experience, Phoenix uh, can feel underwhelming. Dark Willow offers a lot of value. She's got uh, a lot of tricks up her sleeve. You've got those roots. You've got a ton of damage potentially. Uh, with your Bedlam, you've got Terrorize to disengage in teamfights. 
and yeah you've got like a decent mix of everything but uh, one thing you're sort of missing is like a like simple straightforward point and click stun which you don't really have you have this delayed stun you've got this root and bramble maze um which she can be a bit a bit finicky but uh, definitely can pay off quite well if you're a good villain player snapfire has got like a nice uh, balanced set of abilities Nothing too out of the ordinary for her. She does a decent amount of damage, uh, especially with the ultimate. She's got a stun. She's got like a little bit of a, of a repositioning tool with her cookie. Um, she also has like this little shredder, which can be very strong against uh, certain abilities like the Phoenix Egg or the Undying Tombstone, where it's like a, a hit count. You can take these guys out very quickly. Cottle is recently more commonly played as a mid laner, but can also work decently as a post 5. He just does a lot of stuff. Um, just need, need to be careful and take away too much farm um, from your carries with Illuminate. That can be uh, annoying. But uh, on the plus side, you of course can push out waves quite well. You can, uh, can deep push against like Sue lineups. Mirana is more commonly played as a POS 4, but it can also deal decently well as a POS 5. She doesn't have a reliable disable, but uh, the Sacred Arrow is of course very strong if you land it. Mulat Shadow is always a powerful teamfight ability. So, um, probably she just doesn't do quite enough to really be like straight up strong in fights. It's a sort of very finicky, it relies on landing arrows and such. So, uh, other heroes with more straightforward game plan uh, can be a bit stronger. Tree and Protector is a decently strong laning. You've obviously got a huge amount of base damage. So, you can deny creeps really easily. And uh, you can just. Uh, uh, do a lot in team fights with overgrowth. Uh, you can heal up your towers with living armor. That's uh, uh, an amazing ability. So this hero is uh, is decent, um, but uh, it doesn't have quite the straight up fighting power because you don't have any real stuns. All you have is these, like roots and slows, and uh, it can be a bit hard to land uh, your abilities perfectly. Oracle situationally a very strong hero if you pair him up with something like a Huska. Or you pick him against like a Daxia, for example, you can just dispel his iron shells. But if you don't have these favorable matchups, Oracle is uh, rather mediocre. Tusk, uh, probably more of a plus four hero, but can also play as a plus five. He's okay. Uh, Chikiro offers a lot of uh, damage, a lot of slow. Uh, he's great against like uh, Su type heroes. Um, you've got a lot of like uh, deep push with dual breath and macro pyre. You can also push out waves quite well. You can you can uh, uh, siege towers. Uh, the problem though is that this hero has a very long cast animation, so it's uh, oftentimes possible to, do to dodge his stuff. It's not that easy to actually hit the ice pass, for example. So uh, this hero tends to fall off a bit in the high levels, but in low level games he's quite quite strong. So if you're like below, like say 3k, you can comfortably consider this guy to be an, an A tier hero. Lion has a lot of disables, which is great on a plus 5 to have. Um, the problem though is his ultimate. Right? The ultimate has a very long cooldown level 1. It's like almost 3 minute cooldown for this thing of death, which is only 600 damage. Right? It's like double the damage of a regular nuke, but you only use it once every 3 minutes. And yeah, okay, you get these... Uh, these stacks there, but as a plus 5, you're not going to get uh, to level 12 very fast, so you're just not going to get very many stacks, and even if you do get some stacks, it's not that big of a deal. Like, people really tend to overestimate uh, uh, these like infinite scaling abilities. It's really not that big of a deal on a plus 5 hero, uh, so that's really something that holds line back as a plus 5. Winter Vivan is a great situational hero, great at countering certain heroes like uh, Meepo or Exu like heroes. If uh, Winter Vivan does not go up against any of those heroes, she's just sort of um, mediocre. Uh, so because you have to typically first pick her, she's not going to have that uh, good of a time, because if you first pick her, typically your opponents are not going to pick like a Meepo into you. Magnus uh, is a solid hero, he offers a great uh, bonus to your carry with Empower. But this has been nerfed a lot over time, so it's no longer nearly as strong as it used to be. Uh, you still have good teamfight ability uh, thanks to RP. Uh, you kind of need to get a blink dagger for this hero to really shine. But you can farm decently well, so it's uh, definitely possible to farm that blink dagger. Um, but probably Magnus is a bit better with higher farm priority. Ogre Magi is just a pretty basic hero. 
You just have great laning presence uh, thanks to the strength of Ignite and Fire Blast. And also just thanks to how much raw power this hero has. You know, uh, you start out with 6.3 armor. And like a really good base attack uh, damage. So you can just trade with people really well. You also have a huge amount of uh, region. So um, this hero does great at just like running at people in lane. So he's especially good if you have like a squishy ranged hero as a support. So something like a draw ranger, for example, you can sort of play bodyguard for her. Um, but in general, this hero just doesn't have uh, quite the uh, amount of impact you want to have from a plus five. Ella Titan, great team fighter, situationally great laner. You can staple people um, when you like, stack up camps with your Astro Spirit and run through those camps and then you run, run at people doing a lot of bonus damage. Also, Natural Order can be uh, very powerful. Um, the problem though is if you're plus 5, you're not going to have that much farm, so it's hard to actually make uh, use of the armor reduction. Uh, because the, the armor reduction part of that aura is going to be around your main hero, whereas the um, uh, magic resist reduction is going to be around the astral spirit. Theoretically, you could like really counter some hero with a lot of base armor, like a terror blade for example, but uh, um, it's going to be hard for you as a plus 5 to actually stand next to a, to a carry terror blade and survive. Next up, we have the C tier. These are heroes that are a bit below par, but you can still pick them if you are really proficient on these heroes or if it's like a really good game for them. First, we've got the two heroes with a similar problem, Warlock and Witch Doctor, who do quite well in low level games, but uh, at like 4k plus, they just fall off uh, quite a bit. And in like these Divine to Immortal games, they're no longer doing nearly as well. Warlock is very cool and reliant. Yeah. And better players are able to play around your cooldowns and uh, make this hero a lot less powerful. And Witch Doctor, similarly, if people can't play around uh, Maledict and Paralyzing Cask uh, efficiently enough, then he can do quite well. But uh, once you up against uh, stronger players, he tends to fall off, which is why he only makes it here into the seat here. Then we have Enigma, who used to be quite strong, even as a plus 5, but uh, he received a couple of nerfs and nowadays... He's uh, no longer that great as a support. He's still good in the offlane, but as a support, uh, he doesn't do all that well anymore. Agna similarly used to be a very strong plus 5, but then they removed oh the magic damage reduction from Nether Ward, and now he's just kind of underwhelming as a plus 5, which doesn't do quite enough. Grimstroke is an interesting hero that is uh, still reasonably popular, but his win rate is abysmal. Um, and he's just, uh, I don't think there's anything wrong with the concept of the hero. I just think the numbers are a bit too weak. He needs a couple of buffs, uh, to his abilities for him to be strong again. He can still do decently well if you have some, uh, great synergy with, uh, the soul bind. If you have like a doom or a beast master or something with like a very strong single target ultimate. Um, but in general, Grimstrog is just a bit, uh, too weak right now. Woodwing, kind of similar story. Her build is a fine. I just think uh, she's been a bit over nerfed. Then we get to the D tier. These are heroes that I just would not recommend ever picking as a plus five. They are just uh, too weak. First of all, techies, they just don't do enough. Like they do a decent amount of damage and such, but it's just not, not quite enough to justify picking them over so many other great heroes. Wind Ranger just requires more farm. Don't pick her as a five. Pudge. Same story, he's actually a pretty good hero right now, but only as a core. Pudge core is great, especially off lane, but as a plus 5, you're just not getting enough farm. Enchantress, she's a great laning presence, but in pub games, winning the lane is not enough to justify picking a hero. You also need to be strong later on. And Enchantress, it's just not that great later on. Um... So she, she still is like decent in, in pro games where this like early game prowess is so important. But as soon as you get any, anywhere below that, uh, uh, Greed tends to win games and Enchantress just uh, doesn't do anything later on in the game. Nature's Prophet, again, great laner. Um, but the problem is he just has no teamfight presence. Like what does this hero do in the teamfight? Like okay, Wrath of Nature is decent, but other than that he does nothing in the teamfight. And with the loss of the shard, also he just, his, his pushing power has been greatly diminished. So this hero just doesn't win Dota anymore. 
And then Tiny, I have no idea where people are playing him as a POS 5, but apparently some people are playing Tiny as a POS 5. Just don't do it. This hero is fine as a core, but just playing him as a support, he's just uh, not suited to the POS 5 role. Alright, that's my list for 732C for the POS 5 role. I'm also going to be making some uh, tier lists for, for other roles, so do subscribe to this channel. Also, other content uh, coming here soon. And if you disagree with any of these placements, uh, write it down in the comment section. Did I miss any heroes? Any heroes that I put uh, too high or too low? Let me know. And uh, before you go, click on one of the videos on the screen. And always willing, I'll see you there.